Now it sure as feels personal when she's pointing at you, saying it's your fault, blaming you, saying that you failed her 15 years ago and she's never trusted you since. And how could you not read her mind and know what she needed and right? blaming you and saying, you don't do enough. You don't care about me. All these things that really stab me to the heart and stab the men that are attracted to this work in the heart. Right? You want to take responsibility for your life. You're a man of virtue. And you, of course, don't want her to feel bad. So the nice guy within us blames ourselves fully. It must be our fault or lash out in anger. So how do we provide emotional safety? We're going to get into that. Let's start with this. So in the chat, I want everyone to rank yourself one to 10. How skillful do you believe that you are with providing emotional safety to your wife? Right? There's days that it's easy. You feel great. Finances are fantastic. The, the kids are all uh, knitting in the corner after they've cleaned their room and they offer to make dinner for the whole family, right? There's like easy, there's easy days like that. I don't know kids that knit. There's easy days like that. And then there's really hard days, but how do we want to face the difficult days? Now, this may not be difficult for you if you're experienced with a woman's emotional storms, but imagine your house was in the middle of that tornado right now. But yeah, this may be a horrible day for you if you're in the way of that storm, or it's a beautiful day if you're the storm chaser who's taking a picture a la seeing her emotional storm for what it is, an expression of nature, an expression of the feminine. Even if it's pointing at you, or a, I guess in this picture, if there was a cow flying in the air towards this person, it wouldn't be personal. It would be the spinoff from her feminine storm. So I see fives and three, four, five plus, five plus. I don't know what the plus means, but five plus, round it up, eight. So Quajo, tell us about a three. Why do you give yourself a three? in being able to provide your wife emotional safety. Come on in, please. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, go for it. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Yeah, good to be here. Well, um, yeah, I just gave myself a three because, um, I mean, I just feel within myself that I'm not, you know, that skilled. It doesn't come naturally to me. I have to put in some effort to make it work. And um, when when there's a storm, when the storm happens, when the emotions come, I I feel overwhelmed and that i have to put in again effort to to stay calm to take a breath and let it wash over me but it it does take some effort it doesn't come naturally and that's why um i put it to me and sometimes the storm takes over me and i fight back and it's a mess <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, um, yeah and coming back from that takes takes a lot of work so, so yeah that's why it's great for me gotcha yeah and i of course you and i have talked on this call and other calls before, but when you say that you you fight back, is that when you feel defensive, you feel like she's attacking you? Yes. You fight back, such me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So when have you seen her actually actually feel emotionally safe, or what what might you estimate? What does she look like? What does the household feel like? What does she you know exude when in your mind she feels emotionally safe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd have to go back a ways to. Oh, you know, the few and far between moments, because I feel like there, there's been a lot of broken trust that I'm slowly, you know, clawing back from. And so emotionally safe right now looks like, oh, I want to spend time with you. I want to, you know, just cuddle together, hang out. Um, and, and also, I mean, that's things, positive things. And then also on the things that are not happening and the negative things like, I don't want you to be upset with me or get angry at me, you know, because as soon as I get, I, you know, I make a mistake and I'm, I show any form of anger, she emotionally goes into, oh, I feel unsafe. And because the, the, the anger in me triggers her, because in the past that anger has been scary to her and has caused, you know, some really um, traumatic out outbursts. Um, and shut down on my end so it's yeah so not being angry at her and then um just just wanting to to relax in my presence and and it, as long as i'm able to to hold my own and handle her emotions and her you know her craziness and not be moved she feels safe yeah and that so speaking as someone who really wore anger on my face, on my sleeve, you know, I just was obvious to pretty much everyone around me whenever I was even confused. When I was confused, I looked angry, right? Like, what? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like that even that mm -hmm. looks angry. So how do you take that? How do you make sense of that for yourself now? Do you do you still beat yourself up about that? 
how do you make sense of it? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say I, I do. I'm getting better at, so, so in the past, what, I, what would happen is I would go into this downward spiral of, you know, I get angry and then um, she would criticize me for that. And then I would kind of dig myself deeper into this hole of, oh, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm, you know, in despair or I just fight even more. And it just becomes a huge crisis in our relationship. Um, but now I'm getting better at just, just not digging the hole deeper, but stopping and, and getting back up on the horse and saying, okay, I made a mistake. Yes. Um, yes. I see that I'm, I'm falling off this wagon. I'm going to get back on the horse and I'm sorry. And yes, even, even my apology, you know, it takes a while to be accepted, but I'm just going to bear that pain of, okay, I, I, I messed up. And even the pain of the time it takes to for her to even feel some inkling of, oh, I'm, you know, maybe I'm feeling a little safer with you. That that pain of being, yeah, of being apart in that brief moment. I'm getting better at that. Um, and yeah, it's just this is all just from from you know, reading and growing and you know being part of this this group and just um, developing more relationships with other men and discussing these issues. So I think I'm getting better. at it. Yeah, well said. Absolutely. I know exactly what you mean. I think we all do. Uh, one thing you said there, Quadro, I'm going to press pause on you. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step forward. Thank you. Uh, one thing you mentioned there, that that pain, the the pain when you're apart or the pain when she's disappointed in you or you you know know that you violated a value of yours, so you apologize. And that time it takes for her to accept that apology or warm back up to you. That uh, emotional pain, let's say, of that instance you could call it karma. You could call it a way that you're learning. You could call it cause and effect. To me, I'm starting to really see those moments of emotional pain, uh, not unnecessary pain, not purposefully caused pain, but when we inadvertently cause this rift and we feel that disconnection, that, that type of pain, that's, that's a resistance. It's a resistance to our, let's say, old nice guy behaviors, wanting to go back to that. It's resistance to becoming this new man. It's resistance to uh, the man that we are not yet, we have not yet become. Yeah, it's, it's, it exacerbates, it points out the gap between the man that we are, flaws and all, right? Be beauty and flaws and all, right? And the man that we want to become or the man that we are going to become. Now, I'm leaving her out of the discussion completely because we can only control ourselves. And, you know, she is a different discussion than what we're having at this moment. But that pain, I'm starting to realize, um, let me tell, so a quick story, for instance. My Current fiance, we are getting married this year, actually. We've been together since 2016. Uh, she moved in 2017. So within that first year, there was a couple of, you could call them fights. We don't really fight, but she'll definitely, if there's a if there's an issue, you know, she's more likely to close down and distance. And I don't even remember what it was about, but within that first year, she left one evening and stayed gone for the entire night. And she went to sleep at her parents' place. And uh, of course, I had the initial wave of, rejection, feeling of rejection and disappointment and wishing we could have like talked it out kind of a thing. I've been doing this work for a long time. So I actually <laughs> purposefully shifted my mindset to, to think, actually, you know what? It's kind of nice that I get the bed all to myself tonight. And I actually felt that, I actually believed that. So I fucking, you know, spread out in our, in my king, king size bed that evening and laid diagonal and used every pillow because I wanted to, I wanted to just like lean into the experience. Now it's taken me a lot of work to actually believe that and think that. The next day we had a discussion about it, which is a topic for another time. You know, if anyone wants to ask me about that, let's you can send me a message or email me. Well, how did I handle that? It's a different point. But I actually thought, oh, good, I get to be alone tonight. I get to have the bed all to myself tonight. And in that, the the transition moment from the rejection and disappointment and that pain in that moment, I flipped the script. I changed the story for that evening at the very least to think, oh, it's actually a good thing. You know, she's, she can have space. Not that I would have liked it to handle that way. And she hasn't done that since we've talked about it, but it's that, that pain of, oh, oh, how can I change the story or what else is this highlighting within me? Let me jump over to uh, Joe. So Joe coming in, you give yourself a four. After I speak with Joe, we'll step forward. So Joe, you gave yourself a four. Why'd you give yourself a four in your ability to provide emotional safety to your wife? Um, <laughs> I don't know. We we had a an argument this week, right? It's Mercury retrograde, so <laughs> is of it? Of course, okay. it's the week of fighting. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. I guess maybe I don't know if it's because um 
it's not that I'm sour, but I've done a lot of this work, right? I've been part of your group for years, been listening to Tim um, for years. I've done other men's programs and I'm kind of getting to the point of where um, I almost don't give a shit anymore. Congratulations. Like, okay. That's okay. like, what are you going to get out of the relationship um, that makes it worth it? So I'm sort of pulling myself back almost like, um, like it's, it's a Kobayashi Maru, right? That there isn't a, um, you know, there, there isn't an answer. And I've tried so many ways that if your partner isn't going to try, it doesn't matter what the fuck you do, right? Like if your partner is going to be that house plant that's behind you and not communicate, like, I, I think that, um, I don't believe a successful relationship is based on communication because people are screaming mass communicating. It's based on understanding, right? And trying and putting in an effort. And um, so I, I feel like, I don't know, maybe, maybe just because I've gotten to the point with this one woman that it might be time to move on. Like, I just can't seem to provide it for her. And, you know, I've changed as a person in so many ways, like, um, COVID's actually been good for me because I've had time to myself. I am just as productive. I'm more productive. I get more work done now because I'm not listening to, you know, bullshit conversations in the office about the Patriots and the Red Sox and sure. who cares, right? Like when I'm, when I'm working, I'm actually working. And um, so I've had a lot of time in the last two years because I said, you know, there's people who are going to come out of this thriving and people who are screwed. And so I've done so much work on myself and, and now I guess I'm at this point where I don't know, it's not that I feel lost, but I, I feel like I'm not providing it for the person that I really care about. And, um, you know, we're supposed to try to provide it for other people, right? Our sisters, our mothers, other women in our life. And, um, sometimes they're not always upfront about things. <laughs> Yeah, certainly. So Joe, a bunch, a bunch there. Can I dive in a minute with you? Are you cool with that? You may, you certainly may. I didn't yeah. mean to be negative because I'm not. No, no negative, I don't think that's like negative I had to at get all. To a point of distance myself. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's negative at all. I think it's very real. Uh, there's some things that you said not to be a contrarian. I want to put something on the other side of the table and a couple of things that you said, uh, but that's very valid. I had a man tell me last week, you know, it seems as though with many men that he sees in the forum and in the private membership group and such, and through the stories, right? And you've been around Joe. It seems as though that often a man has to basically lose hope or like give up, give up her des for her desire, stop, like really start to not love her in the way that we, in the way that we would like colloquially say that, if I'm using that word in the right way, like when you say, I love someone yeah. or the way you love them when you first got together, that form of love seems to need to go away, to put it bluntly, for her to be interested again. And there's lots of reasons for that that I could talk about. But for the man, that that feels like a nightmare, right? It feels like that's the last thing in the world we would possibly want. We'd lose our lifeline. Why, you know, this whole like, oh, I, this is how I felt when I met her and I married her. Why would I ever? Well, that love between the two of you, if you're in this work, including myself from the past, it's probably gone in the first place. Like it's probably not there when you come to this work. For 99.9% .9 of the men when you come. Okay, now you want to get that feeling back, but what if it's not the same feeling that you're actually searching for? What if you're actually searching for something that you've never felt before? What if you're actually searching for a different level of love, different discussion? But back to Joe. So Joe, I, I don't agree that the basis of healthy relationship is communication. I actually don't agree with that. I think it's polarity. And I've based my right. career around right. it. Right? Like you go to therapy to- you. Yeah. yeah, you go to therapy to learn to communicate better. And I don't know a woman's pussy that's been wet after therapy, like, honestly. And it's more about her feeling safe to express herself when she apparently wasn't safe at home with you to express herself. So it's only going to be more of a shit storm when you're in therapy, generally, like most of the time, at least men that come to this work, right? Men that want to save the marriage or want the marriage. Right. Uh, so I, yeah, so I don't think it's communication. But to your point of it takes two people, sure, there there comes a point when this may not be something you want to stay within. And we won't go into that. One thing that's really interesting, Joe, you said about this house plant. So I have quite a few house plants. I like, I enjoy plants. Uh, this one, I moved into this room. At, 
all the different plants speak to me in different ways. <laughs> they all have different personalities. This one's very chill. It like doesn't really matter what room it's in and it's okay with the different kinds of water that I wiped it down actually yesterday, wiped the leaves down, which I rarely do like once a year and watered it and such. And this one's just happy. Like this one's just happy to be in almost any room. I have other plants that are finicky as hell. You, you overwater it once and the whole thing's absolutely dead, you know, even though it can drain. And if it's too close to the sun, it burns. And if it's too far away, it starts to die. And there's some just a giant pain in the ass, right? No, <laughs> that is, a, I'm not trying to say those are all women, but my point of these plants is I love them. I, I care for them. And I kind of talk to them, if you will, not literally, but they have a personality to me, but they don't need to, you know, give me sex or tell me they, that my shirt looks sexy today or you know, thank me for watering them, not directly anyway, and I still care for them. So I find that an interesting kind of situation that what we expect from our woman often, we're really projecting a lot of our own, sh our own shadow, our own insecurity, and this kind of thing. And if we just detach, just if we could detach from this old uh, codependent type of love, nice guy type of love that most of us have experienced, expressed, if we could have a grounded sense of ourselves, if we could m go through the pain, the growth of the resistance of the pain of that loss of the old addiction, and just treated her with love, maybe like she's this plant right here, it may go a different way. Right? But Joe, within you, where is your edge right now for you? This is a different question than our topic. But if you'd say your personal journey, so career, you've been kicking ass and a lot of time into work, right? Where would you say is your edge as a man, just you, not counting your wife, but like physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, where would you say your edge is? I, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Sure. So where do you find a challenge in your life? Where is, where's uncertainty for you or resistance emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally? Oh, um, I, I mean, I, I constantly challenge myself to get to new levels i set goals is that what you mean like yeah yeah so i i have some career challenges that i'm working on that i set up like okay let me go for this next level um you know in sales um i've set some uh physical goals for this year to do some ski racing which i haven't done in years and so what do i need to do to get to that because that gets back to the polarity Right. Yeah, okay. Am I doing things to build me as a person and as a man? And um, so the last storm, which was a couple of days ago when, you know, he was storming about stuff that was sort of related to my work. I'm like, I, 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 that's on you. I don't have time for your storm because, you know, you're jealous. I'm at a conference. Half the people are women. And you're going to have to learn to deal with it. You know, whereas I used to be different, right? The nice guy thinks, honey, don't worry. Uh, you know, of course, I'm not interested. Uh, I'm like, half the world is women in the workplace. Fucking deal with it. I'm not apologizing for that anymore. And trying to deal with that nice guy bullshit of let me worry about her feelings. No, what the fuck do you want from me? Women want to be in the workplace. They're half the, literally half the people in my company. Yeah, they're going to be women at my work. I don't, you know, before I tried to provide that emotional support of don't worry, I'm not looking at anyone, et cetera. And now I'm like, I don't have time for this conversation. And maybe that's being an asshole, but all you're doing is feeding that storm, right? And, and there is a point of where you're distracting me from what I'm trying to do instead of supporting me. I hear what you're saying. So, I, I hear what you're saying, right? You're kind of like, fuck your emotions. That's basically what you're saying to her, right? There's, there's, there's a point to where you, you deal with that emotion over and over and over and over again, and you don't get anywhere. And then you're like, okay. I mean, I hear you. Uh, let's see. How do I want to, how do I want to talk about this? So this I get, actually... like, it might sound a little harsh, but it's like, you know what, if I, if I say to you three times, like, no, like, don't be worried about this. This is somebody I'm working on a project with. And you're like melting down uncontrollably. Like, I got to save myself. Sure. I, I hear you, Joe. And I'm not going to take the whole time for this, but I'm very interested to talk with you more, actually. Um, the fact that she's doing that, melting down because she's worried about another woman is 
a very good sign that she's attracted to you and cares about you, first of all. <clears throat> and uh, this will segue great into our, our first topic. I, I, I still want to... I still want to go off on another tangent, Joe, but I'm going to press pause on you. Let's see. Yeah, sorry, didn't mean to take yeah, so much I'd love time. To talk, yeah, I'd love to talk with you more about that because um, I, I understand you. I feel you. You know, yeah, brother, you seem fed up. And it's like, yo, stop dragging me down is basically what it feels like. You're this like neurotic, absolute crazy mess. It sounds like you know, I don't know her at all. I, I haven't asked you about her that I recall. So it sounds like she's a shit show the way you talk about it and you're fed up. Like I was with my grandmother. My grandmother was an alcoholic and a prescription drug addict. And it's like, no, I'm not going to tell you for the 34th time that I closed the garage door because your OCD is like going ape shit, you know? <laughs> like, so I, I get that yeah. feeling, right? I understand. And, and so we'll, let's talk about it more another time. But yes, yeah, so, so I'll press pause on you, Joe. Thank you for being so like direct, all open, honest. I love it. Appreciate it. So let's jump in. This is actually a great segue. All right, the first way... Well, this woman, when I talk about this picture, I, Joe is using logic. Like, hey, you don't have to worry. Like, you know, it's okay. Like, really, uh, looks like someone stole something out of your purse in this picture. It's going to be okay. We'll go to the bank. You know, I called the bank. We'll cancel your credit cards. Don't cry, honey. Come on. Like, it's fine. You're fine. And the way, <laughs> the way Joe was just talking there is using logic. It's like talking to her brain to brain trying to talk to her brain with your brain. And that's a masculine form of communication. Like it's fine, it can be fine. Like just trying to appease her logically. But I think all of us know that this woman in this picture is not gonna be appeased by telling her it's fine. And really what her concern is at this moment, that it doesn't feel like you're welcoming her emotions wholeheartedly. So a woman wants you to welcome her emotions wholeheartedly. And that's one way that they feel emotionally safe. If we judge them as crazy, and I've been there, Absolutely. We judge them as crazy if we're exhausted and we just can't handle anymore and we get angry. Any of that shut down by us, any of that shielding of our heart, she feels as a rejection of her heart. She feels as a rejection of who she is because a woman feels like she is the current expression of whatever emotion that she's feeling. And so when she, if she feels that that's shut down, she feels that we're judging her, not accepting her if we're not welcome to her emotions wholeheartedly. Now, this is not a discussion about boundaries because that is important. And so I'm leaving that to the side right now and we're not discussing that. That's a caveat, but overarchingly, unless it's abusive or an emergency or dangerous, physically dangerous, then we're usually not over a line of being able to welcome her emotions wholeheartedly. And again, I'd love to talk with the man if they wanna speak with me about that. So she wants to be accepted no matter how crazy she thinks she is or how crazy she thinks she's coming across one of her core desires as a feminine being is to be accepted and to be loved no matter no matter what the second way to provide emotional safety one of the top three ways is your ability to be able to breathe or take a break if need be if things are escalating or you just are frustrated or you know you didn't sleep well last night and the brand new kittens were jumping on your face at three in the morning, you know, <laughs> that I have uh, I've been a dog person for a long time. And we've got kittens and I actually love the hell out of them. They're great. But when they jump on your face at three in the morning, not so fun. But if I, well, I've got another quick story about this too. It's not kittens, but it's the alarm clock. So you know, her, my partner's alarm, her alarm goes off at 430 in the morning and she turns it off. It goes off, you know, nine minutes later, she turns it off. It goes off nine minutes later again. And I say like, honey, is there something you need to get up for? It's not even five o'clock in the morning or maybe it's five o'clock at this time. She's like, no, I don't need to get up. Go back to sleep. So every time I'm falling asleep and waking up nine minutes later, right? Being woken up nine minutes later, guess what? Alarm goes off again. So I shake her a bit. I'm like, hey, your alarm is going off. Do you need to get up? Or, you know, can we turn the alarm off? Like, no, I don't need to get up. This happens a couple more times. And it's like, the last time I said, please turn the alarm off. And she says, okay, reaches over and didn't turn the alarm off. And I swear to God, it was a seventh or eighth time this goes off and it goes off again. And I just growled like really loud, like, oh, like that, right? Now, any man in here would say that that was pretty, yeah, you could understand that. She jumped out of bed, like ran into the bathroom. And man, it took me a couple of days, Quajo. It took me a couple of days at least to make up for what, <laughs> to make up for that growl on the ninth time the alarm went off at five in the morning 
Okay. But it doesn't matter. And she didn't even remember, you know, seven out of the nine times I talked with her or asked her, she didn't remember. So it doesn't matter the logic of the situation. It's just how we made them feel. And she felt incredibly unsafe. Like I was being the biggest asshole ever to, you know, growl in this way at her alarm. So in that moment, I didn't breathe. I didn't take a break. I didn't just get up or go turn her alarm off myself or something else. What I decided to do or knee jerk reaction was to growl like an asshole, growl like a caveman. And she felt emotionally unsafe. So in that moment, I didn't have the ability to breathe or take a break. And then we'll talk about these here as soon as I get through the third one. So yes, breathing, taking a break, taking a walk, what works for you, go working out, you know, growling like a caveman, I don't think that's really going to get you anywhere unless she really is, likes that kind of kink, you know? So if you, I'll get to the third one here. If you want to reach out to me, or if you haven't yet gotten our 45 minute audiobook, our free 45 minute audiobook, greatmenmovemountains.com slash free audiobook. Yes, I am going to ask you for your email address. And yes, I am going to send you uh, articles that I write. No, I'm not going to sell you something after that. But yes, you will be on my newsletter list when you put in your email address. It's a fantastic audiobook. And if you want to reach out to me directly to talk about any of this, you can DM me through our Facebook group, greatmenmovemountains.com slash Facebook, or you can send me uh, an email if you have my email address, or you can uh, send me a contact form, greatmenmovemountains.com slash contact. Okay, number three, the third way of the top three to provide her emotional safety. So you lead her in Joy coming from you, joy coming from your heart. You could also say gratitude. You could use the word gratitude instead of joy. You could say inspiration within your life instead of joy. So this is joy from within you, not because of her, not because you just had you know your fourth beer, but because the joy or the gratitude or the inspiration is coming from your heart. Plus movement, so moving her in space, and I'll describe this, plus opening her in some type of surrender. So let's talk about this. So joy from within my heart, I'm in, I'm in control of that, right? So it's breaking of the codependence with her. It's resetting the polarity. It's no longer seeking validation from her, the nice guy, like Joe was saying, which I definitely did in the past. And so you have to be able to turn your shoulders toward the world with inspiration in your career or purpose or service for others or a combination of those things. And when you turn your shoulders toward her, you continue to bring that joy just it exudes from you. Not you're not, you know, doing jumping jacks, you're not a clown, but you just have that sense of freedom and peace and accomplishment and ambition and groundedness just going throughout your body as you breathe. It's like second nature, that joy. Movement means move her in space somehow. So at, when she shares with you or when she's frustrated or she's being emotional, how do you provide her emotional safety? Ask her to come stand by the window or let's go get some fresh air and talk about this more. Or, hey, let's go downtown, let's go downstairs and sit in these comfortable chairs or on the couch together. Let's take a drive. All you need to do is move, move her a few feet in space. I actually use this with all my students, all my special education and emotionally disabled students that I worked with in the school system. There's a concept called proximity, and then there's a concept of simply moving them into another space. And really, it resets the energy of their mind. It gets them into their body. So we you know when we're moving cross laterally, when we're walking using both of our feet or when we're you know, using both of your hands, you're firing larger parts of your brain. You're firing different neurons. It's actually bringing you back into your body. That's one of the reasons, because have you seen tapping where you, they tap on different sides of your body or tapping like this or tapping on your legs? It's cross lateral. It's firing larger areas of your brain, especially for boys and men. Because without movement, usually most of our brain isn't firing. That's a whole other topic. Uh, so where it was like, oh, so if you move her in space, it, it's like, it's kind of feng shui for a woman as well. You're moving away from the space you just had that negative energy in. You're moving away from that connection to her anger or her upset in that corner or that room. And you're moving to another place and it literally gives her a chance to reset. And it gives you a chance to lead. So leading her in inspiring joy within you, gratitude that's unattached, gratitude just because of the man you are in the world and the journey that you're on. You're asking her, you're leading her, you're telling her, you know, you're welcoming her, inviting her to move into another space, which resets the energy. And it, it has her following you in a small capacity. Often if you're getting fresh air, 
you know, that's good for the body as well. If you're standing by a window, it's, you can look out into space and looking farther away with your eyes actually shows more hope. It brings more hope into our mind. That sort of metaphor brings more hope and beauty into our mind. And then with all that, you're asking her to surrender. And that can be as simple as, you seem really upset about this. Thank you for bringing this to me. Tell me more about that. What's underneath this for you? Why is this painful for you? What about this is painful for you? And so asking her to share more, share more deeply is a form of surrender. If you're higher on the staircase of intimacy, you might be asking her to sit on your lap or take your hand and you take a walk or something with more physical contact. If you're even higher, like the best case scenario or you know where we all would love to be through this work is that you can pick her up and spin her around or you can carry her over to another place or you can put your, you know, you can grab her hair or you can touch her in a certain way or push your fingers into her, you know, traps into her shoulders and she's welcoming to those things and it helps her surrender even more. So there's certainly levels of the staircase of intimacy, which is the free audio book that we have. But here's the key that Cynthia and I teach in our one-on-one and in the Kingly Life Path membership group, Joy Within You, leading her into movement and then leading her into surrender is what my favorite way of bringing her into feeling more emotionally safe with you. Her feeling that the relationship is above water. You care about her, not because you know, you're know you logically describing it to her or you're trying to assuage her or, or you know like act like she's a child, but more of treat her like a feminine woman and an adult woman with agency that's just going through an emotional storm. So I'd love to hear feedback on this. We have about 13 more minutes on this call. What questions do you have? How does this come across to you? Is this completely foreign to you? Unmute yourself. Come on in. Ask questions about this or any scenario that this reminds you of. So here's an opportunity to ask questions or to share with us or ask the men something, please. Yeah, an opportunity for you. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, who's there? Let's see. Chris. Yeah, please. So I went skiing today for the first time in five years and I took my kids and it was awesome it's glorious and my daughter has never skied before and we went up to the very top to have lunch and it's like at you know nine thousand feet and then we drop back down to about six thousand so it's a three thousand foot vertical i mean it's, it's over about two miles but she's freaking out right there's a couple of blue squares that we had to go past to get down to the easier stuff and she she was my sister had actually come with us and was helping her and, and my daughter just refused to go down the hill. And I climbed back up and I just sat with her. And I said, seems to me that you are very distraught. This is very scary. Yeah. This is very hard. How does that sound? How does that feel? She just in tears. Yes, this is hard. I said, I can understand that. Yeah. This is hard. This is scary. And I just sat with her. And she just bawled and like, went into me and I just said, how about I help you down past this part? And then let's see how you feel once we're down through here. She said, okay. My sister had been talking to her for like 10 minutes. Yeah. So I got her up and we went down and we got to the next part. And I had helped her for a while. She's like, I, I kind of want to do it on my own. I'm like, perfect. Go for it. And she fell again and was like scared again. And I went back and I said, I think we've already got past where we, like, you know, you can do this. Now's the time to get really mad. Because I think your fear is keeping you from doing this. And I think this is a time that you can yell and scream and nobody's going to care. And I said, watch, I'll do it. And I yelled. I said, do you want to yell? No. I said, maybe that yell, you can use my yell for your yell. Okay. Oh. You ready to go again? Yeah. She said, cool. Then she freaking skied the rest of the way down herself. Nice. Nice. It was so fucking amazing. Like beforehand, I would have lost my shit, right? I would have been like, like old me would have been, what do you mean? Put your fucking ski on and let's go. Or like, I'm going to leave you on this hill. I'm going to leave you on this freaking mountain. Or like, you just got to do it. Like, I would have been such an asshole. And just to like really see her like afraid, right? Like scared. And like, I'm her fucking hero, right? Like I just saw her and I'm blown away at how amazing this day turned out. Like just incredible. Like it wasn't just about the skiing. It was recognizing that she was afraid and recognizing like she has power still to do this. And all she needed was just a moment to like have at least me, her dad, be there. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. But I think it's interesting what you're talking about, like movement 
and joy and surrendering. Mel, the actual Mel, the, one of the meanings of Mel is to move and to remember. I don't know if you knew that. And mm-hmm. female is to, is open and inviting, right? I think it's just like what you just said is innate to who we are and what in the masculine and what the feminine, they want to be open and they want to be inviting. But for a long time, I wasn't doing my, my part of it, right? Like I wasn't, I wasn't remembering, I wasn't moving. I was sitting in my, my bed. I was retracting and hiding. Now it's not to say I don't have days where I do that or, or, or my, I'm not, not doing that, but I don't know, for at least for today, getting my ass out in the, into nature and inviting my kids and just really in the moment where I could have lost my shit, I stayed present and I saw her as she was. And it just it was one of the coolest experiences of my life. Fantastic, Chris. What a great story. So who are you? How are you different? Who were you on the hill? You said it was today you went skiing, right? So who were you on the slopes? How were you different today than you had been in the past? What was your mindset going in? What kind of frame did you have? How how you know what? I mean, a lot of the other things, dude, I'm still freaking scared, right? Like I'm I'm set for mediation a week from Friday. And I don't know what to do with that. And yet when I went today. I just said, I'm not going to deal with all these other stresses. I'm just going to be present and just honest. Like I knew what I was doing. Like I planned it. Right. But I didn't know what the adventure was going to be. Mm. And I just, I went into it with just me and my, like making this day a great experience for my kids. Like I wanted them to have a, a great experience and I wanted to enjoy them. Like it wasn't about like in the past, like I would have been, I want to hit the black diamonds. I want to hit the, I want to like, just do my thing. I would, I would have found in, I would have gotten the instructor for the kids. I would have, you know, pawned them off for the day. I would have gone and done my thing. But like today, today, like it was just about me being with them. It wasn't, a, I, I, I guess I left my ego in the car. Mm. And I just said, everything today is about being present with them. It doesn't matter if we like get one run or 30. I'm going to be patient and I'm going to be kind and I'm going to be here with them because this is hard when you first start and this, they are going to, there is going to be fear because it's scary when you're flying down a freaking mountain with no brakes except yeah. for your own body and your own legs. And so like, I just, I don't know. I just, I had no expectation that I would even get in runs for myself and I didn't, and I was okay with it. So yeah, probably even my ego at the car and just saying, I, I'm going to be absolutely present with my kids because at the end of the day, like experiences are good, but people matter most to me now. Yeah. That's what's different. Very cool. And that's how you go into the mediation, brother. <laughs> Chris, you let it go. No, don't go in with expectations, right? And that's why we fall down. Expectations of what other people are supposed to do. You are amazing today with your daughter. You had no expectations. So next week, don't go in with expectations. And then you can't get hurt by the outcome. Roll with it. I think it's really well said. That, that was well said, Joe. I appreciate it. And so Chris, yeah, you consciously decided what was the most important thing and the connection with your kids, right? So as Joe was saying, before mediation, ask yourself, well, what's the most important thing, right? And the the coaching trick, the coaching question is, how do I want to feel when it's done, when the mediation is done? Like today, how did you want to feel when you were done skiing? Like connective, one run, doesn't matter how many runs. So how do you want to feel when uh, mediation's done? So I'll leave that with you. I'll press pause. Thanks, Chris. That was fantastic. George, coming in. Thanks for raising your hand. You're muted, George. I'm not sure if you know. You hey, go. Jeff. Thanks. Sorry for the delay. No problem. Um, coming in. Yeah, and I'll I'll be uncharacteristically concise tonight because I know we're near the end. Um, you know, we're we're given space. We're separated. That's kind of the way things are right now. Um sent a group text today to the kids saying that she was coming home to, you know, visit, take care of things and everything else. And I didn't respond. I just go about my business. I'm not angry. I'm just kind of living my life. And then I get a one-on-one text. Hey, do you want to, do you have time to grab a dinner this week or something like that? And I said, sure. Any night, but Wednesday. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, this game's getting old, dude. It's like this patience thing is, is difficult. I'm tired of having to be a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i i liked I, i'm not gonna lie i like being catered to as a as a douchebag but i realized that i was a douchebag <laughs> and you know this this whole growing up thing this whole man and up thing is uh 
is work, dude. And and you guys have been fantastic. And these stories that everyone is experiencing is helpful. You know, misery loves company. Joy loves company. Learning how to be grateful is is a good thing. Um, it's a wonderful thing. But you know, I'm just I'm just a little bit challenged on how to go about things. I actually popped the question today, so to speak. I said, "So what's new? How are you doing? You coming home more often anytime soon?" And you know, she's trying to get things squared away with aging parents and stuff like that. But you know, I'm I'm just you know I I just uh, I don't know if there's a question in here. I know if this is like the old Larry King radio show, he'd say, "What's your question?" I don't know if I got a question, except. Um, how to um how to how to remain that that kingly state that you talk about um when the curveballs come it's like we go from famine to feast no communication for several days to yeah i'm, I'm coming home and uh, you got time for dinner but you know it, it's it, it's just dinner i can promise you that right i i hear you so Part of me wants to say, and I'll ask you a question. I only have, we only have about two minutes left, George, but yeah. part of me wants to say, enjoy the time when you're away. I, there's many men that have a similar feeling too. Like, oh, I'm, I'm in pain when she's away. And it may be because of the great ups and downs and many other reasons. But George, what's the most difficult curveball? Is it that, that she's away and then home? Or what's the most difficult curveball for you? The, the most difficult curveball is that I'm in limbo and she is not. Okay, so what if you weren't in yeah. limbo? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, if I, I said to her around the holidays, you know, what's going on? And she says, I've made my position clear. When I have something new to tell you, I'll let you know. And I said, likewise, and that's where we ended it. So I'm in limbo remaining hopeful. And I guess the curveball is, I don't know where the hell she's at because she doesn't know where the hell she's at, possibly. Or she's biding time for when it's right for her. You know, everything is kind of one-sided right now. You know, what do they say? If both of you aren't working on it, then none of you are working on it. I don't know if that's completely true, but it feels like it. George, thank you. I hear what you're saying. I, I don't agree with the, if you're both not working on it, but that's a different topic. But so, George, you and I have talked quite a bit in snippets over time. Uh, it doesn't sound like that's a curveball, honestly. It sounds like she's pitching a nice, fat, slow one right over the plate, and per, you know, just showing you what she's gonna do. She's saying, "Hey, I'm gonna throw it. I'm gonna throw a changeup right over the middle of the plate." It seems like what she's doing, and then she just does. <laughs> so you're right. seems like you're the one that's curveballing yourself almost. And I say this with love. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm not accepting it. I'm. I'm not accepting that she's serving exactly what she's designing that's right and so that's where yeah. your resistance is is what, mm. what so that i would do uh what i call walking through hell with you and i'll tell you really fast here i do this with clients so it's play play it out so if she doesn't want to get back to you just pick them the worst thing you can imagine in this scenario and then you play it out so such and such the terrible thing happens then what i would then what would i do then what would I do? Then what would I do? Then what would I do? And you ask yourself at least five, at least five times, you know, she never wants to talk with me again. Um, she spoils the whole family against me and I'm the devil to all of them. She steals all my money, you know, and hopefully one of those isn't, I jump off a cliff. So don't go there. Right. Like assuming that you want to give service to the world, assuming that you want to squeeze every ounce of life in this existence that you have to either, you know, grow yourself or to serve other people or to send a legacy as best possible right but what would i do then what would i do then what would i do then that's the homework that i'm going to give you that's the walking through hell you keep going forward what would i do then right so so play with that and then next time you happen to be on one of these calls talk with me about it okay appreciate it absolutely love you guys being here so give this give this some time in your journal you know, give it three minutes in your journal. What is joy within my heart or inspiration or purpose? And then how could I do a small form of movement? It may just be, hey, that's a great question. Tell you what, let's go talk about this on the porch outside. Or you know, let's go sit down over here. Or you move over to the window and you invite, invite her to go, come over to the window and talk at the window. And then ask her to open something more deeply for you. So joy plus movement, you move her. And then you ask her to surrender. And that's all the way to lead. Yeah.
And a woman wants to know that you have skill. She wants to see and feel that you have skill. She wants to feel that it's spontaneous, right? But she's there to experience life too. So I hope that we don't put too much pressure on her. I love seeing you guys here.